I called it similar to page 14, example 3. I say similar because I altered the question a little bit. We'll look at the matrix like this, and uh, I need to find the inverse of that matrix. It's i, i for the for the complex numbers, yes. So it's a, although I haven't just made this comment explicit for you, but actually the process we develop for the inverses, it equally works for complex numbers, for matrices with, for matrices with complex numbers. However, for this particular one, I'll show you a very neat way to find the inverse. Beautiful one, which hasn't involved any, any row echelon form at all. Look at this. And that will be the remaining two minutes will be enough for that. What I will do is this. I will use this n matrix again for this. If I use this n matrix, then my a, this a, I can represent my a like this. Look at this. Everybody agrees with that? i times n deliver these components. i squared is negative 1. n squared, here it is. That's the n squared thing. So it will be this negative 1, which comes from n squared. Now, what I will do now, it's the, the first person who come up with this, he's, he was a genius. It was, it's a, many things on matrices, they model from numbers, and they, some of them quite, quite ingenious. Uh, what I will do now, it's, it's not my invention, I will just put it like this. I can extend this with these further terms, like this, and this will, not, this will change nothing, isn't it? Because all of the other powers of my n matrix, they are zeros here, there. So although I put this here, this doesn't affect anything, because all of the other n's are zero matrices. All of the other powers are zero matrices. But now when I look at this, when I look at this, do you recognize anything from the numbers? It's a geometric progression. So we know it, that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing if you have an x, which is the like sum of the geometric progression. Under some conditions, under some conditions, you can find this sum, right? And the sum will be this one. So the inverse for this number x will be this number. So knowing all this, it doesn't give you any, any like an argument, uh, like a substantial basis to do, to do anything. But I can just, by an, uh, thinking analogously, I can just say, why don't we try the inverse for inverse this matrix? Why don't we try this? Because in the number context, that's what that's what worked. This has nothing to do in the way we argue. We just this was just like a driving ideas for us, and now I'll try this. Let's just try this. If I try this in the in the way a time x, so I have to multiply this a matrix with this x matrix. It's a very easy expansion. I can expand this. If I expand this, the expansion will be. So this is these are the terms which are come which come if I multiply all of them with this identity. Now if I multiply all of them with this negative i n, the result will be negative i n, negative i square n square, negative i n i sorry negative i cube n cube. Look at this. This cancelled by this. This cancelled by this, and this is just zero. So the result of this is just identity. Isn't that the requirement for the inverse? Now, if you multiply in the other order, x times a, so you, now you have looking at the brackets like this. Again, by doing the simple expansion, simple expansion, you have now you multiply this i and negative i with this i. As a result, you multiply this i and negative i n with this n i n. As a result, you multiply this bracket i negative i n with this component, and as a result of all of, all of that, again everything cancels out. Look at this: these two cancel out, these two cancel out, and this is zero. Here it is. So you end up with the identity again. So this is truly, truly the inverse. I didn't do a single row echelon form. All of this process came from my background knowledge on numbers. It's a good example which shows to you actually you never disregard the, the knowledge and the experience. It's, it, even though you, you might think it initially it doesn't fit into, into your new context. Two examples.